I won't be paying, I never pay for fish anyway, I don't care how fresh they think it is mate, there's nothing better than you catching one right now mate and bringing it home and eating it, that's fresh. Would you like to receive HF, VHF and UHF amateur signals and others on an Android mobile phone? Keep watching and I'll show you how. There's only a few items you need and it will cost you well under $100. Not the greatest of performance, but it's still worthwhile, especially if you're just starting in amateur radio and don't want to spend very much. Plus, you'll be able to hear a lot of other signals, including FM broadcast, aircraft, shortwave broadcast, and more. Apart from the mobile phone, there's only a few things you need, and I'll run through them right now. First item is this RTL SDR. Now there are versions available online, but make sure you get a genuine one. Uh, the RTL SDR blog actually tells you how to identify the genuine from non-genuine, but it is worth paying a bit more to get the genuine model. That's because it's got some features like frequency stability, an up converter for HF, and other things that improves your reception experience. There are various versions, but I suggest, especially if you want HF reception, getting the version 4, which is this one. That includes an HF up converter, rather than direct sampling. I'll just give you a closer look. On one end it's a USB that plugs into, well, it could be your laptop computer, or your Android mobile phone via a cable that I'll talk to in a moment and an antenna connection and that's pretty much all there is pretty small light and quite a bit of electronics in here apart from that you also need a cable and that connects between the RTL and the Android mobile phone now there's a bit of a twist with this cable it's called an OTG cable on the go and it's slightly different in that two of the connections in it are connected to allow your mobile phone to work with accessories such as connecting an external keyboard to it though in this case it will need to be this USB RTL SDR this is the OTG cable I got a female socket for the RTL and then a plug that goes into the phone once you have that well you need a couple of other things as well. Uh, the software. I use three apps. The first is RTL SDR driver. That's essential. Without it, the others won't work. There's also SDR touch. And this one is one that you can download and use the demo version for free, or you can pay and unlock the other features. Then there's RF Analyzer. These last two are basically your receiver type things that enable the SDR driver to receive, select stations and produce audio. The reason why I've got both of them is that they are a little bit different in their features and functionality and thus I do re recommend having both. With the SDR Touch that works with my receiver down to 9.7 megahertz so it doesn't cover all the HF range but it covers a fair chunk of it and RF analyzer in contrast starts at about 26 megahertz so um, doesn't cover most of the HF range so for receiving on those lower frequencies I use SDR touch and for RF analyzer that's good for the uh, top end of the HF range, VHF and UHF. Plus, on the free version, you are getting the spectrum display as well. Uh, for more information on setting these up, it's not quite plug and play, but pretty easy. I suggest looking at a video by Tom the Dilettante, and that is called SDR on Android device. So I'll have a link to it in the comments below. Here's a bit of a close-up of everything, the RTL SDR, the OTG cable, if you're in Australia 
this came from Officeworks, both the cable and the adapter. The total cost for me was $12, but you might be able to get them online or from other suppliers. And then the Android mobile phone. Depending on your antenna connections, you may need an adapter. This is a SMA male to BNC female. And that just screws onto here. This is an antenna I built quite a few years ago. Information on my website, vk3y.com. And I did produce a video on it about 13 or 14 years ago. It's a telescopic antenna, has a rotary switch, a toroid and a variable capacitor. And I have used this successfully HF transmitting. But today I'll just use it for receive. With the rotary switch you can switch it so that the tuned circuit is out and you're just using the vertical antenna which is good for VHF. Or if you put in a bit of inductance and use the variable capacitor that can resonate it on various HF frequencies. I've just plugged the SDR into the OTG cable, plug that into the phone and then up comes a little window open RTL SDR driver to handle blog V4 and we say OK to that. Now we're on the FM broadcast stand. One thing I would suggest is if you are trying this for the first time, try the FM broadcast band because you're likely to have some strong local signals and um, this will help get you used to some of the functions. Time zone. Load $60 and score $30 bonus game credit. Load more, play more. And the executives on boardrooms being men. <laughs> exactly, yep. <laughs> PTEM Beacon. Just tried SDR Touch, now RF Analyzer. What you just saw was reception outside with a small portable antenna. Now for some reception inside with a larger antenna. A G5RV about 30 meters from end to end. As you'll notice, the signals are now stronger. Yeah, Roger. Oh, 
eh, ¿no? ¿Está bien ahora? Sí, muy bien, muy bien. Yo espero que los estados de Australia estén bien, pero tú puedes tener los estados de Australia de cualquier manera. Sí, BK3, Austin, Lulu, Mobile. BK6, Steve, Austin, Here I'm using a laptop computer with the RTL and reception is much better than with the Android phone. Especially with the bigger antenna I just demonstrated, there are some other things you need to know about using the RTL SDR. First of all, it's not as good a receiver as dedicated hardware, but you can fix some of its problems with a front end attenuator and a bandpass filter, preferably tunable. I found with my unit there are particular problems around 28 MHz. That's because I think there's an internal crystal oscillator at 28.8 MHz and if you've got strong AM broadcast stations coming in then they appear. For instance a station on about 1 MHz might appear on 27.8 MHz so that can spoil reception of desired signals on those frequencies around 27-28 MHz. Some front end bandpass filtering and or attenuation will help fix that issue. Another thing I noticed when listening to signals on the 28 MHz amateur band was that some signals appeared multiple times across the tuning range and sometimes they weren't all that much different in signal strength so it was actually hard to find the exact frequency of some stations. Possibly again attenuation and some bandpass filtering may help but not sure about that. I have done some experiments with attenuators and bandpass filters for RTL SDRs but I'll leave that for a future video. Until then, let me know your experiences with RTL SDRs in the comments below. Enjoy these videos? Want to start in amateur radio? Well, check out my books, Ham Radio Get Started for USA Readers and the Australian Ham Radio Handbook for those in Australia. For more information, visit my website vk3ye.com or search their titles on Amazon.